There's another area uh, which is raising the profile of uh, the kidney in type 2 diabetes and indeed type 1 diabetes and this is where the kidney can actually be used as a therapeutic target. Now in normal life um, the kidney filters the, the blood and what happens to glucose within the, uh, the blood and plasma is that it, it is filtered into the renal tubules. However, 99.9% .9 of that glucose is then reabsorbed back into the circulation, hence glycosuria is typically a pathological finding. Now, the mode of that reabsorption is via a, a transporter known as sodium glucose trans transporter, of which there are two variants, SGLT2 and SGLT1. And we now have drugs that are in development that are specific SGLT2 um, inhibitors. Now the specificity of this inhibition is important because SGLT1 as a transporter is widely distributed but is predominantly found in the bowel and by inhibiting SGLT1 then side effects of diarrhea and intolerance can um, result. However, specific inhibition of SGLT2 appears to be well tolerated and the outcome of SGLT2 inhibition is to enhance glycosuria. So there is an increase in the amount of glucose that is lost through the urine. Now, although this seems counterintuitive since clinicians have generally regarded glycosuria as a bad sign and a sign indeed of the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes, by allowing calorific loss by glucose you can not only improve HbA1c but you can also do it in a way, way that typically leads to weight reduction. And so these agents are currently in development. They have been tested with various other oral hypoglycemic agents and are seen to give about a 0.8% reduction in HbA1c, which is the sort of level that you typically see with new diabetes products. But of greater interest perhaps is that it's also been trialled at this early stage in pre-licensing for use with insulin, because since it has no impact on the etiology or the Me uh, mechanisms of development of diabetes or in the mechanisms that protect against hypoglycemia, this is an agent that should, in the setting of type 2 diabetes, be a good add-on therapy to insulin and also have a low hypoglycemia risk. The downsides of treatment, as you might expect, is an increased risk of infection, although the infections tend to be fungal infections rather than urinary tract infections. So the hope is that these agents will be a new mode of therapy for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes and that if they get through the various trial regulatory procedures then we may be seeing their launch perhaps in 2012 or 2013.